Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Buck Parker. I'm a board certified general surgeon. In this video, we're gonna talk about gallbladder symptoms, gallbladder disease symptoms, okay? So in the last video, we kind of talked about uh, the anatomy of the gallbladder and the physiology of the gallbladder and kind of why we develop problems with the gallbladder. This one, I'm gonna specifically talk about the symptoms of the gallbladder disease and why we have those symptoms and it, actually why it's hard to distinguish from other uh, organs and other problems and what the diagnostic dilemma ends up being and why that is. Okay, first we'll start a little anatomy now. We kind of did this in the last one, but if you haven't watched that, uh, go back and watch it. If not, we'll go over this real quick again. This is the esophagus, okay, stomach, liver, and then remember, this is the left side, this is the right side. This is the gallbladder, we'll say GB. Okay, this is the small bowel. We'll just put small bowel, that's the duodenum. And this is the pancreas here. And the, this is the, these are called the, the, the bile ducts. This is the common bile duct, and we'll say CBD. Okay, so we talked about what happens in gallbladder disease in the last video. In this one, I wanna talk about what it, are the symptoms specifically. Now, before we talk about that, I wanna, I wanna just mention real quickly, let's see what kind of, which uh, thing here. So we have these, this nerve, it's called the vagus nerve. It's V-A-G-U-S, it's not vagus like, but it's V-A-G-U-S, the vagus nerve. This is like one of the main uh, uh, autonomic nerves, which means it runs kind of everything in the background um, of our body. And it comes from our head, it goes in through, through our neck, actually really, really close to the esophagus here. It's got an anterior and posterior branch, which means uh, front and back branch. And then it flips around to right side and left side. So essentially, the vagus nerve comes in, and nerve innervates, right? the stomach, the pancreas, that goes over here to the liver. It travels down here and it has these little branches and it innervates essentially all of this here. And so the first part of the duodenum and, and the pancreas and the bile ducts and the liver and the esophagus and the stomach. So all these things are innervated by the vagus nerve. And um, what ends up happening is with many of the diseases of this portion of the the body we kind of call this the foregut this they will have similar symptoms and now not they're not all exactly the same but they are definitely similar and they're perceived as in a similar spot okay and so typically let me draw this little picture here and we'll get this out of the way so if we go like this this is the belly button, this is the rib cage, this is the groin crease, okay, in the belly. This is the left, this is the right. Typically, this is called, we would call this is the epigastric area, epigastric, okay. This is the right upper quadrant, right upper quadrant. This is the left upper quadrant, left upper quadrant, okay. Well, it's kind of, it's kind of like this, I suppose. Honestly, so this is the right upper quadrant, this is the left upper quadrant, this is the uh, right lower quadrant, this is the left lower quadrant. Many of these symptoms are going to be in this, this area, this like band area right here for these um, organs. And so, we'll, but we are on the right side and more often than not, we have right upper quadrant symptoms. But we, some patients, for whatever reason, only develop this epigastric uh, pain and they come in and they have uh, they go oh man you know like right here it just hurts right here after a meal yeah, I get this crampy bad pain right here and I got fevers and chills and all this stuff and you think well that's really maybe going to be esophagus or stomach because that's kind of more midline but it ends up being their gallbladder which is uh, over here which is kind of an interesting thing but that's because the referred pain from this uh, from like basically the vagus nerve most of the pain you're going to have is in the right upper quadrant okay people uh, develop crampy pain. What happens is that we talked a little bit about this in the other video, but their gallstones get stuck in the neck here or here or here or here. here. And that gallbladder is trying to squeeze against an obstruction. And so when it's squeezing and there's, it can't push anything, that's, that's when you develop this crampy right upper quadrant pain. And people come in and they go, oh man, I just had this crampy pain right up, right up here. They grab their um, you know, they're kind of like upper uh, abdomen, lower chest and say, it's just right there, it's so bad, it's just cramps. And then, and then they say, well, I had it, you know, a couple times last week 
and it went, you know, then it went away. I thought it was fine, and then this time it came back and it never went away. So typically they'll have it like they'll have it for a couple hours, and then it completely goes away, and then they come back you know, a week later. Now they have fevers, chills, nausea, vomiting, maybe, and they have this rib quadrant pain, and it's more of a dull, achy pain this time, and then that's not going away. And so and the other thing I want to talk about is because of the nerves, the nerve to the diaphragm. Okay, so the nerve to the diaphragm also also comes down through the chest and it comes down through the neck uh, and it kind of lays on the back of the chest and we get this uh, we get this back pain. So some people say you have this right upper quadrant pain and this back pain here, I don't know why, why I have this shoulder or shoulder blade, they actually say a shoulder blade. I have this shoulder blade pain and it's like uncomfortable and they keep doing this and they're like it's gonna go away but it's not because it's actually uh, the gallbladder laying on a diaphragm. The diaphragm is innervated by this nerve that comes down through the chest kind of near the, it, it innervates also kind of around the uh, scapula and the shoulder blade. That's uh, kind of why they get this different pain, which is kind of interesting. So the other thing that that typically happens is when we have a stretch or like say the stomach is really stretched out and it can't empty or the small bowel is blocked somewhere and it can't empty and it's trying to squeeze against that, we get this nausea because basically the, the body is saying, hey, you can't get anything, nothing's going forward, it's gotta come back up, right? And so this, the same pain here, the same symptoms end up happening. You get this nausea because the gallbladder can't push through. So it's telling this, the body, hey, nothing's going forward. We gotta, we gotta come back, <laughs> we're gonna go back the other way. So you get this nausea, vomiting. And then the other thing that happens is gallbladder symptoms are kind of on a continuum. We have this kind of what we call biliary colic. And that's the pain where you develop this crampy pain and it completely goes away. And then it goes this on a continuum, it can go either way, to acute, what we call acute cholecystitis or acute infection of the gallbladder. Okay, and in the middle is like chronic kind of cholecystitis, what we call, and this is a biliary colic happening over and over and over, so the, the gallbladder becomes inflamed, but it, but it doesn't become infected. Okay, acute cholecystitis, we call it infected. And we even get to gangrenous because sometimes the gallbladder completely dies. We go in there, it's completely dead, or part of the wall is starting to become dead. So we call it gangrenous. That's when the, the gallbladder is actually starting to die. So the, in relation to that, what happens is you get fevers because you start to develop an infection. So you can have, if you have fevers, uh, chills at home, and then you get this nausea, vomiting, right upper quadrant pain, maybe some back or shoulder pain or shoulder blade pain, then that is like kind of the classic symptoms of uh, gallbladder disease. And that's all because this, these stupid little stones here are blocking everything off and, and then that, you know, after a while this thing can get infected because the bacteria, there's, there are bacteria in the small bowel here which can go backwards kind of through this uh, gall, uh, uh, the bile duct and get um, into the uh, gallbladder and because it's because stasis is the problem so if it's nothing's moving out the, the bile i mean so the bacteria can get in there and they can and they're not flushed out good enough and so they can uh, start to proliferate eat up the gallbladder basically the wall and get infected and all that stuff so that's kind of the quick and dirty on uh, gallbladder symptoms and gallbladder disease symptoms so i hope you understand that it gives you a better understanding of what's going on if you've had it or you're having it or <laughs> you need to go see, maybe you need to go see a doctor you weren't sure yet. Uh, if you have these things, you got fevers, chills, nausea, vomiting, right upper quadrant pain, crampy, maybe to the back, then maybe it's time to go see your doctor, like ASAP, all right? Hey, you guys, thanks for watching. Um, it'd be great if you could subscribe to my channel, maybe like the video, share it with a friend, that'd be great too. Comment below if you would, if you like the videos, that's great. Tell me these are awesome. If you don't, tell me these suck, or no, don't tell me that. I have like, you know, my ego gets shattered easily. So anyway, hey, uh, thanks a lot, you guys. I'll see you in the next video.